Have you ever scribbled your name on a piece of history, maybe a bench or tucked away in a corner of a historic site, a whisper to the future? I was here. It seems like a simple act, but this desire to leave our mark spans across all of human history, linking us directly to our ancient ancestors. From the deep shadowed caves adorned with the earliest expressions of human creativity, to the vibrant chaotic graffiti of today's urban landscapes, this urge transcends time. Would the same apply? To your fantasy world? Would it matter to your world building? What is the impact it will have on your magic system? Welcome to another episode of Just in Time Worlds with Marie Mullaney. Today we're exploring the hidden threads that connect the deep lore of your world to the story you're telling and the magic of your environment. So, on a side note, I was totally going to shoot most of this video outside, but unfortunately the day I had scheduled the shoot, Finland decided that April is a great time for snowstorms. So, here we are back in the studio. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, first let's talk about the ways we, in the largest possible sense of the word, have expressed ourselves through time. Humans have been drawing on cave walls since we learned how to make pigments that stick to rock. Over the Christmas period, I visited South Africa and there I was privileged to spend a few nights on a farm in the Free State, where the sand people, also sometimes called the Bushmen, have rock art. We hiked out to a cave and found paintings of hunts and animals and stick figures. And I'm not sure how old these paintings are, but the oldest rock art in southern Africa is from the Apollo 11 cave in southern Namibia. In, and it is pieces of stone that fell and were buried in the desert sand. And that art is dated at 27,000 years old. 10,000 years older than the Lacroix cave in France. Hope I pronounced that right. Obviously, with art that old, we can only guess at what our ancestors were expressing when they mixed their pigments and painted on the rock. It could be shamanistic, which we'll speak about more later in the video. Or it could be a means to communicate their cosmology and beliefs, much like churches have stained glass windows with religious art. Or it could simply be a historical record celebrating a mighty kill or a war against another tribe, or just surviving the environment another year. But mostly, I believe, it is an expression of identity, a confirmation that I was here, whoever that I is. Cave art is much the same as rock art in this perspective, although it is found in caves. The most famous site, without a doubt, is the Lacroix Caves of France, where we have animals painted on the wall from multiple eras and those amazing handprints that I think is very much a statement of we were here. We were all here, and these are our handprints. We can see this kind of statement also in the names people carve into rocks. I found some names in the same cave I visited with a rock art. The oldest one that was still legible was from 1846. But if you really want to talk about names carved into rocks, we have to talk about El Moro National Monument also known as Inscription Rock. It's a sandstone promenatory with a pool of water at its base in New Mexico, USA, and it's like a palmerset of history. The oldest inscriptions at El Moro are the petroglyphs created by the ancestral Publians and other Native American peoples who lived in the area for millennia. Petroglyphs, unlike rock art, is carved into the rock, not painted on, but otherwise the idea is much the same. 
but inscription rock is at a watering hole in a dry region. And so when Europeans arrived at the Americas, they too stopped there and left their names, starting with the Spanish in the late 16th century. Names and dates are the most popular carvings, but some also left messages behind for posterity to find. In the 19th century, English and American names start appearing along with messages or even poems as the United States expanded westward and wagon trains passed by Inscription Rock. And in our modern world, we still draw and paint and carve into rock. Consider graffiti. Even though it is often seen as illegal, even though it is often removed, the intent is still there. I was here, and this is what I want you to know. Perhaps it is my name, perhaps it is something about my politics, perhaps something about my religion or how I see the world. It is who we are. We leave messages for the future carved into the past. But why does that matter to you, the fantasy world builder? After all, you're not going to have your story revolve around rock art now, are you? Well, Perhaps not, though considering the many Indiana Jones fans, you could write a story about an archaeologist. Even so, rock art, petroglyphs, names carved in stone, and graffiti is worth including in your cultural world building. And it's time to explore why. And we'll start with creating your cultural lore and connecting the past of your world with a present of your story. In the realm of fantasy, every mark etched into stone, every line drawn in the sand, every symbol painted on a city wall can be a thread woven into the tapestry of your world's lore. But more than that, it can be an opportunity to show the history of your world rather than telling it in a boring prologue to the reader. Your character can lay their hand over a red imprint on a cave wall and wonder about the ancestor that made it. Or they can read a name carved in a rock as they're following an ancient prophecy. And this can be a clue that they're on the right, or the wrong, path. We feel a profound connection when we encounter these kinds of art in our world. At least I do. And your characters can feel that same connection, speculating about the history of those who have gone before them, and thus educating the reader about the history of your world as felt through the eyes of your characters. So, here are three ways to integrate this kind of art into your culture. One. Historical legacy. Use ancient markings to hint at the deep history of your world. Perhaps a series of cave contains the story of a creation myth told through the paintings that have become sacred to the people of your world. Or a once great city, now in ruins, whose walls still bear the inscription of its last defenders could be a place of historical significance. Two. Cultural identity. Different cultures within your world might have distinct ways of marking their presence. One culture might carve intricate reliefs into their buildings and monuments, while another uses colorful murals to decorate their streets. These practices can speak volumes about values, traditions, and aesthetics of each culture, and gives each culture a unique flair to help the reader tell them apart. So these are the painting streets people, and over here we have the carve on rock people. And as long as your art is visually distinct and the reader can imagine that, they won't confuse the two cultures. Three, personal stories and memories. On a more intimate level, personal markings can add depths to your character's backstory. 
A character might carry a token marked with a family crest, or another might return to a secret spot in the woods where their family has carved their names every generation. This can serve as a tangible reminder of their past and the strength they can draw from their ancestors. Particularly powerful in an ancestral worship system. And all of this is without even touching the fantasy elements of your world. So, if you've enjoyed this video so far, hit that thumbs up button and let's talk about magic, mystery and fantasy captured in rock. In the world of fantasy, these simple acts of expression can carry weighty significance, serving as conduits of magic, vehicles of divine will, or keys to unlocking otherworldly secrets. First, let's talk about magic. Pictures, symbols, and petroglyph-like art can be incorporated into your magic system. Imagine the walls of an ancient fortress not just adorned with symbols, but imbued with spells of protection, written in the language of magic itself. These ruins, much like the glyphs in Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive, could offer a tangible representation of magic that characters can interact with directly. A character might trace their fingers over a glyph to ignite a spell. Or they could puzzle out a combination of pictures to unlock a magically sealed door. The physical interaction with magic invites readers into a more immersive experience where the ancient art of marking services where the ancient art of marking surfaces becomes a dynamic element of the storyline. It also works really well for role-playing campaigns to have that kind of interaction with a magic system. And if your magic system includes names, consider the impact of carving your name on a rock or using rocks to preserve the names of the things that you know in order to use them in future spells. And for more on my thoughts on runic magic and naming magic, check out the videos linked in the information card on those topics. A magic system based on painting sigils or arts or glyphs could also be a great modern magic system with graffiti artists sneaking around cities and finding the right rocks to spray with spells to fight the man or maybe to show ownership against rival gangs in a dystopian city. I think a magic system based on graffiti would be very interesting to work with in a modern or near future world. But straight magic isn't the only way this art can interact with your magic system. I promised we'd talk about shaman practices and rock art, and it's finally time to do that. Some archaeologists think that rock and cave art depict scenes from trance states, including the transformation of humans into animals, which is a common theme in shamanic journeys. The paintings might have served as a medium for shamans to communicate their experiences of the spirit world or to bring healing to their tribes or to describe encounters with powerful creatures. Within your fantasy cultures, this can also be the case, but with real magic backing it up, especially if shapeshifters, spirit creatures or other planes are real in your world. Certain markings could be more than mere art. They could be a bridge between the spiritual realm. A warrior might bear tattoos that under the moonlight ripple and change, granting them the strength of a bear or the speed of a wolf. Such practices deepen the mystical aspects of your world, tying the physical act of marking to a profound spiritual experience of your characters. And if you're interested in my thoughts on other planes, there is a video for that linked in the information card. Of course, shamanism is essentially about faith tied into nature, 
But you can also have your rock art, cave art, glyphs or graffiti tied into a religion of the gods and their divine protection. Beyond their magical utility, markings can serve as a testament to faith. In the shadow of a looming cathedral, etchings of sacred symbols on its doors could offer protection from dark forces, each line a prayer made solid. These symbols could draw on the power of the gods, blending the spiritual with the tangible, offering both a narrative device and a deeper exploration of your world's religious beliefs. I used Sowa symbols in this way for my epic fantasy series, Sangwheel Chronicles. My characters find a hidden place of the gods in the desert and find ancient Sowa markings carved into rocks, which tells them that they're in the right place. Jacqueline Carey in Kashil's Dart had Fedra and Jocelyn discover a cave with a mark of Eloa, which granted them sanctuary for a night while they were fleeing with hordes of Scaldi snapping at their heels. So don't forget about religion and how you can communicate it to the reader through this kind of art. But fantasy is more than just magic, and the markings left by denizens of your world need not be limited to humans alone. Envision a forest where trees bear scars from the claws of dragons, serving as territorial markers. Or mountain passes where the stones are etched with the elegant script of elves, warning travellers of the magic that lies beyond. You could have drawings of mythological creatures that are real but rare. You could show the differences of cultures by how they made this ancient art, considering their varied species. I got a new camera. I don't know if you can tell. It's great, but it's taking a little bit of getting used to. So I had to stop just now and change the battery because I didn't realize that the battery had not fully charged despite the fact that it went blue. <laughs> anyway, just a side note. Back to the video. These markings could tell stories of coexistence, conflict, and the rich diversity of life in your fantasy world. Incorporating these elements into your world building not only enriches your narrative with depth and wonder, but also bridges the gap between the ancient human urge to make our mark and the boundless possibilities of magic and fantasy. So whether it's a ruin that casts a spell, a shamanistic painting that transforms reality, or a mythical creature leaving their mark on the world, remember, the act of marking something is as powerful and as varied as the imagination itself. How would you use rock art, petroglyphs, or graffiti in a fantasy world? Share your thoughts in the comments below. As I mentioned earlier, I did use rock art in my epic fantasy series, Sangwheel Chronicles, and those books have brought you this episode. They've gotten some pretty solid reviews, so I feel confident in saying that if you enjoyed Sanderson, Martin, and Jordan, you'll like Sangwheel Chronicles. And you can support the channel by buying the books from any of the major retailers, links down below. But please, don't feel pressure to support the channel financially. You can also show your support just by watching another video. Since you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy my video on using propaganda in fantasy worlds, or you can trust the algorithm with its recommendation right over there. And I will see you soon for another episode of Just In Time Worlds, where we build what we need when we need it.